a series of times in which I told the truth. To my soon-to-be ex-boyfriend, I say, I do not make you happy. To my boss, I say, I disagree. To my new love, I say, I am afraid. A series of times in which I didn't. <laughs> I have my first crush on a girl in fourth grade. I meet her at a sleepover. She wears an oversized Green Day t-shirt and slams two of her brother's old drumsticks into a couch cushion. This indicated to me a troubling future of attraction to, you guessed it, musicians. <laughs> But in all seriousness, I fell asleep that night lying to myself for probably the first time in my life. I do not like girls. I do not like girls. Girls. I do not like girls. <laughs> I call my father down to my bedroom every night I can remember at the age of 11. What I say is, my stomach is upset. What I mean is, I can't stop thinking about what happens if I fall asleep and don't wake up. That truth felt too scary to admit to myself, let alone to my father. The popular boy at my table has a lot to say about the government in my 12th grade civics class. Ronald Reagan, he says, stars in his eyes. <laughs> Trickle down economics. <laughs> the floor is open to debate and I am surprised by my own hand, seemingly having floated into the air without ever consulting me. <laughs> my name is called. Something about structural inequity presses against my tongue. Universal health care. <laughs> Gay marriage. The, the world I want to live in is stuck in my throat. I forget, I say. I sit on my truth. June Jordan said, as you heard, In the process of telling the truth about what you feel or see, each of us has to get in touch with ourselves in a really deep, serious way. Our culture does not encourage us to undertake that attunement. Consequently, most people, most people, exist at the mercy of other people's formulations of what is important. Other people's formulations of what is important. All of us were socialized under other people's formulations of what is important. Some of those formulations are wise. Some deeply harm us. As we come of age, we begin to recognize the widely held truths that we have been socialized to believe. In my case, the other people of my hometown include Betsy DeVos <laughs> and the guys who invented alleged multi-level marketing scheme Amway. <laughs> so my formulations had a lot to do with being straight and having babies and upholding capitalism. In my teens, I did reject some of these widely held truths, yet I did not undergo real attunement. I didn't determine my own affirmational truths. I only existed in dissent of the beliefs that I disagreed with. It is important to name that which we are against. We cannot, however, expect to build new identities or liberatory futures, living only in a place of disapproval. As the brilliant late political activist Afeni Shakur said, I've heard a lot of what I'm against. I don't like this and I don't like that and I hate this. What are you for? What are you for individually? What does it mean? to ask the hard questions that lead to real and true attunement with ourselves. We are often told to live our truths, speak our minds, ask for what we want, but the process of attunement 
is more complex than any of those phrases make it sound. The process of coming to terms with your own truths in a real serious way means both shedding other people's formulations and asserting affirmative truths of your own. Here's a secret about Americans. We all want to know the right answer. In a society that values individual success above all else, many of us want to be the one at the microphone. Let me share my truth, loudly, rightly. <laughs> Though attunement eventually leads to our ability to share our truths confidently, differentiated from other people's formulations of what is important, the process of attunement requires Quiet. Quiet requires bravery. When you're quiet with yourself, with your values, with the truths you have both individually discovered and inherited, you will make discoveries. What are the truths that have lent you comfort? What are the truths that have lent you power? Do you actually believe them? Are they good and sound objectively? Or do they just make us feel good? Our society, so the majority of other people, have tightly held to so-called truths that uphold white supremacy, patriarchy, ableism, and other systems of oppression. If the other people of my entire world have decided that whiteness, colonization, men, etc., are the most important, am I really so evolved that none of those oppressive systems have infected my understanding of the truth? No, I'm not. And so sometimes I must shed a truth. Let go of a concept I once held tightly, and when I do that, I, a white American, my instinct is to get the right answer right away. As a brilliant teacher of mine, Vivette Jeffries, once said, don't rush to fill that empty space. Don't rush. Attunement is uncomfortable. Attunement is not a quick grasping for the next maybe right thing. Attunement is the studied, careful practice of taking in other people's experiences and your own to discover what you really think, who you really are. One of my first periods of true attunement was in my early 20s. I had shed a lot of old, ineffective truths, and I was lost, afraid. This was the first time that I heard a queer spoken word poet perform, Denise Froman. She said, I've heard a woman becomes herself the first time she speaks without permission. After that, every word out of her mouth is a riot. <laughs> Despite the profound meaning and specificity of those words, it wasn't the poem that changed my life. It was hearing a person share their truth deliberately. It was witnessing the strength and clarity that is another person's attunement. That, that is what drew me to the art of poetry. Now, just because I love poetry doesn't mean I enjoy every poem I hear. <laughs> every poem simply presents the opportunity to hear another person's perspective, to witness another individual's attunement. We practice, we need to practice being deliberate and intentional in our language and in our lives by witnessing others model the courage necessary to do so. Every poem and every conversation is a portal 
into better understanding one another and better understanding ourselves. So here's the challenge, the difficult part. Every time you open your mouth, every time, Every time you put pen to paper, you, you individually carry the power and the responsibility of directly expressing your truth. Whether or not you're a poet, the mere existence of poetry as an art form should feel like a dare to you, a challenge, an invitation. June Jordan goes on to say, if you're in the difficult process of living as a poet, you're constantly trying to make an attunement to yourself, which no outside manipulation or propaganda can disturb. That makes you a sturdy, dependable voice, one that others want to listen to and respond to. It's an act of profound bravery to be a sturdy voice. You don't need to be a poet or even like poetry to embrace the challenge of living as a sturdy voice. We all have the capacity to access the power of speaking our truths deliberately. Another series of times in which I told the truth. I come out at age 23. 14 years after my first crush on a girl at the local open mic. The phrase, I'm queer, is not in itself a poem. And yet, at this moment, it is. In the wave of 2020 uprisings against police brutality and white supremacy, I tell my parents that I am a police and prison abolitionist. They ask questions. We speak honestly and lovingly. This conversation is not in itself a poem. And yet at this moment, it is. I, newly gay married, dance with my spouse by the ocean. The phrase, look at the moon, is not in itself a poem. And yet at this moment, it is. Is At work, a man tells me I'm too tall to wear heels. The phrase, you're not allowed to speak to me like that, is not in itself a poem. And yet, at this moment, it is. I hurt a beloved friend's feelings. The phrase is, I'm so sorry. I didn't intend to affect you in that way. I promise to think through my actions in the future. That is not in itself a poem. And yet, in this moment, it is. When we study our own stories and the stories of others, we hone our attunement to ourselves. We discover our truth. We witness the courage that it takes, the political act that it is to tell the truth clearly, intentionally, consistently, because to say what you mean can be a poem. To tell the truth can be a prayer. It is to extend yourself, your spirit, and trust that you will be met with understanding. It is an expression of care to approach people with your truth in good faith. And it is an expression of faith in yourself to say precisely what you mean. <laughs>